Welcome guys. In this video, we are going to look at cells in biology and we are going to use random questions from different past papers to answer questions that you may encounter based on cells. And for those that may be interested in online intuitions, please feel free to reach me on this number. Okay, so we have the first question where we are told figure 1.1 shows an animal cell has seen under an electron microscope. So an electron microscope, this one is more advanced than a light microscope. So for this one, it can give us a detailed structure of a cell. Like the cell that we are given here is the detailed. So we have uh, parts labeled I, F, H, G, and the cytoplasm. Now let's have a look at uh, the first question. So th for the first question, we just want to identify the labeled parts F and G. So if you look at uh, the uh, line that is representing the F, we can see that uh, we have this structure that has uh, the dots on the surface. So whenever you see dots on the surface of a structure like this one, then just conclude by saying we are dealing with what we call rough endoplasmic reticulum. So if it doesn't contain if it doesn't contain the ribosomes on the surface then it is a smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Then G, uh, G, we can look at this line surrounding the, the nucleus. So do not confuse this part to be the nucleus. So the nucleus is the inside part. So here we can just say nuclear membrane. Right, we move on to question B. So under question B, we are told to explain the functions of the parts labeled H and I. So to come up with the function, first we need to look at what is H. So H is this structure that has a sausage-like structure. So this one is given the name of the mitochondria. So mitochondria, it's a site where respiration is done. Then the function of this one, we, you can say it's where the respiration occurs or that's where the release of energy is done from the food during the process of respiration. So we say uh, structure H is a mitochondria and this is where respiration occurs, right? Then for structure I, structure I, we have the cell membrane. So the function of the cell membrane, it allows some substances to go in and out of the cell. So it acts like a security. So if it sees that the substance that wants to enter the cell is or are harmful, then it is going to prevent those substances from entering. Then if we look at the substances that are trying to exit, first it needs to look at are these substances still useful. So if they are still useful, this part will make sure that those substances are not uh, given out. So say I is a cell membrane. which allows some substances to go in, to go in and out of a cell, right? We move on to question C. So question C, 
suggest two cell parts which would be present in figure 1.1 if it was a plant cell. We are told that the cell given above is an animal cell. So this question is like, uh, we are trying to give the two differences, but our focus is on parts that are found only in plant cells. So the, the first cell part, we can look at the cell wall. We know that the animal cells does not contain the cell, then the cellulose. Cellulose is made from the sugars made by the process of photosynthesis. And cellulose is a part that makes the cell. Even the chloroplasty can also be an answer for this question. Right, so we move on to another question. So figure 1.0 shows some specialized cells, PQ and R. So by now, you should be able to identify cells based on their structure. So we have three cells, P, Q, and R. Now, let's look at the first question. So the first question is just name each of the cells above. So what structure or property can help us to identify the cells above? So for the first party, we have this elongated outgrowth. So the only cell with this structure is the root hair cell. Now the root hair cell or air cells, uh, these are cells that are found on the tips of roots and their main functions are to absorb the mineral salts and water from the soils. Then we move on to structure Q. So structure Q, where you can look at the, the biconcave uh, structure. So the biconcave structure is in line with the red blood cells. So the red blood cells are cells that are found in blood and they have functions like e, transportation of oxygen, e, small amount of carbon dioxide. E, at times e, we say it also gives color to blood. Now for cell R, number one, we can look at the, the structure. So the structure is regular, therefore this is a plant cell. Now because of these chloroplasts, we have a lot of chloroplasts, e, then e, cell R must be a palisade. So palisades are the cells with a lot of chloroplasts and this is where the process of photosynthesis is high. So say palisade cells. Right, we move on to B1. State the functions of the cells P and Q. So P is the root hair cells, so the function we say to absorb, to absorb uh, mineral salts, mineral salts and water from the soil. So now why absorbing this? because we need the mineral salts and water during the process of uh, photosynthesis. And these are requirements that are needed for glucose to be made and also proteins to be made. Because under the mineral salts, we are looking at salts like the nitrates. And we know that nitrogen is very important in living organisms for manufacturing of uh, proteins. Then if we look at the function of cell Q, Q we said are red blood cells. So say to transport, transport oxygen and carbon dioxide. So that is the function that we can give. Now we move on to question e, Roman number two. Explain the adaptations for cells P and Q to their functions. So what is cell P? So cell P is the root hair cell. Then adaptation is what helps this cell to carry out its process. So it's due to the presence of elongated outgrowth. 
So say self adaptation has an elongated outgrowth to increase the surface area for absorption. Then the adaptation of cell Q. So cell Q is a red, uh, red blood cell. So say absence. Absence of nucleus. Absence of nucleus to create more space for hemoglobin. So if you look at, uh, if you are to study the structure of a red blood cell, you'd find out that it doesn't contain even the other organelles like, uh, if you look at the organelles like uh, mitochondria and the like. So the reason why this cell is made in such a manner, we need more space where the hemoglobin will go. Now what is the importance of this hemoglobin? Remember, it's a protein that transports oxygen now where in the leaf is cell r located so remember cell r we say is a uh, palisade so where in the leaf so we'll say uh, palisade mesophyll layer Okay, so we have the third question. The 1.1 and 1.2 shows specialized cells E and F. Right, then question A1, identify the cells labeled F in figure 1.2. So uh, we are trying to identify the cell labeled F. So the cell labeled F is this cell. Then from the inside of the cell, we have this type of the nucleus, and we call this nucleus as a lobed nucleus. Now, this is one of uh, the blood cells. These are cells that you can find in blood. Now, if we were to do a comparison of this cell to the cell that we did uh, from the question, the previous question, from the previous question, we had no nucleus. And that help, helped us to identify that kind of a cell. But for this one, we have a nucleus. Now, the type of the nucleus is what will help us now to identify. So cell F is a white blood cell. Now, for white blood cells, we have two types of white blood cells. We have a granulocytes and a granulocyte. So... Uh, the, the type of where these cells are found depends on, on what they kill, what they kill and how they kill the microorganisms that brings the diseases. So that depends on what they kill. Then for Roma number two, which feature, feature in the diagram enables you to identify cell F? So we we'll say lobed nucleus. Okay, we'll move on to question B1. Figure 1.1 shows a group of similar cells. What term is used to refer to such a group of cells? So this is called a tissue. Then suggest a region in the human body where figure 1.1 is found. So trachea. So trachea or oviduct. So the oviduct is a part of the female reproductive organ in which the ovum passes as it moves from the ovaries into the womb after fertilization or maybe even if fertilization is not taking place. Now give one function of the pass label G in figure 1.1. So what is G? So G, these are the hair-like structure. So the function of these are there to uh, remove dust from air. So say to remove dust 
particles from air. So after we inhale, the air may contain the dust particles that must not reach the lungs because we are trying to protect the lungs from getting infection. So to do that, we need structures that assist in removing those uh, dust particles. Right, we move on to C1. State to specialize cells found in plants. So we can look at xylem, number two, phloem. Then if one named cells, specialized cells in C1, explain its function. So if we say xylem, the function will say to transport. So to transport <coughs> water and mineral salts. If we say phloem, to transport the for phloem, it transports manufactured food from the leaves to all parts of the plant after the process of photosynthesis. And sometimes if the question asks you to identify the process, you need to say that is a translocation. Then for phloem, it also uh, occurs in the secondary growth. So you need to make sure you remember that. Move on to question number four. Figure 1.1 shows different types of specialized cells. So as we can see, uh, mostly the first question in biology paper 2 comes from the topic of uh, cells. So you need to make sure that you understand. And uh, cells, this is the core of biology because cells are considered to be the building uh, blocks of a living organism. So we have three cells, A, B, and C. So based on the structure, we can... Uh, Look at, we've dealt with this one. So this is the red blood cells. Then you remember, we also looked at this one. So for this one, due to the uh, high concentration of the chloroplasty, so B is a palisade. Then for cell C, it has a tail. So uh, the cell or cells with tails are uh, the sperm cells. So this is a sperm cell. So let's look at the first question. Identify the cells A, B, and C. So A is red blood cell. Y by concave shape, we said. Cell B will have palisade. Y, high concentration of chloroplast. Cell C will have sperm cell. The reason can be it has a tail. So that's how we can uh, I answer that one. Then for Roma number two, state the part of the living organism in which each cell is normally found. So cell A, red blood cells are found in blood. Then cell B, palisade cells are found in leaves. Cell C, sperm cells. So sperm cells we say are found in testes. So remember, the manufacturing of sperm cells is done by the testes. Then after they are made, in terms of the temporal storage, they are stored in the epididymis. So if we answer testes, we answer the epididymis, we are still correct. Because the question is just, we state where these cells are found. We move on to B. Explain how cell B and C are adapted to their function. So cell B. We say it is a palisade, so the adaptation is because of the high concentration of chloroplasts. So say because of the high concentration of the chloroplast. Then so C we have the sperm cells. So the sperm cells, we can say because of uh, the tail, apart from the tail and the acrosome. 
So the acrosome is a structure in front of the sperm cell and it's found here. So this acrosome helps the sperm cell to penetrate through the ovum. For example, if we have the ovum here, so to penetrate through this ovum so that the fertilization process can take place, the sperm cell has an acrosum in front. So this also helps to do its function because the function is all about fertilization so that we may have a fertilized egg. Okay, so for question, uh, this is question five. Figure 1.1 shows red blood cells placed in different uh, solutions. So for red blood cells, we know that these are animal cells. So this question is indirectly looking at what happens to, a, to an animal cell if placed in a solution of different concentration. So as we can see, we have two solutions. Solution A and solution B. Now from solution A, the normal structure of the red blood cell is like this. Then for the result, we can see that the cell shrinked. So what may have caused this is that the cell lost water. So here, the water molecules are moving out of the cell. So if the water molecules are moving out of the cell, then what type of concentration is solution A. So this concentration has high concentration. So there is too much solutes. So remember, the water molecules will move from the solution where there is less solute into a solution where there is high solute. Then for solution B, we have the opposite reaction. The cell is gaining water. So if the cell is gaining water, it means that the concentration of the cell is higher than the concentration of the solution. So the solution has low concentration of solute. Therefore, the solution will lose water into the cell. Now let's look at the solution A. Let's look at the type of solution A. So for solution A, since the solution gained water and the conclusion was that the solution absorbed water, therefore this solution is known as the hypertonic solution. So hyper is means high. So hypertonic solution, the concentration is high. And this one, the solution will gain water. Then for solution B, we have hypo, hypotonic. So hypotonic, hypo, below or less than. So this one, the solution loses water. So that's what you need to remember. Now state the type of solution in which each cell was placed. So solution A, we are saying hypertonic solution. Then in solution B, we have hypotonic solution. So what is causing the water molecules to move is different in concentration. Then give an explanation for answer in A1 above. So cell A, so what happened to cell A? We can say that it lost water. So say, cell A explanation, the cell lost water into the solution through the osmosis process. Then for cell B, the opposite happened. So say the cell gained water through the process of osmosis as well. Then in terms of isotonic solution, so isotonic solution is where the concentration of the solution is the same as the concentration of the cell. And if you are to place that cell in this type of solution, nothing happens because they have the same type of concentration. So please 
make sure you remember that okay so I have question six table one shows cells and tissues found in living things so cells we have red blood cell root hair cell pulse cell sperm cell tissues xylem tissue nerve tissue epidermal tissue muscle tissue from table one identify number one a plant cell so plant cell root hair cell So plant cells are cells that are found in, in plants. Then also palisade. So for root hair cell, the function, we say it to absorb. Then for palisade, that's the site of photosynthesis. Then animal cell, red blood cell. Because the red blood cells are found in the animals. And sperm cells. The sex cells that are found in plants are, if we are to look at that, we may look in terms of sperm, and if we are to compare sperm to a plant, we look at the pollen grains. Then Roma number three, a tissue whose function is to cover and protect plants from mechanical damage and infections. So a tissue, uh, that is the epidemo. So the epidemis is the outer layer. So say epidermal tissue. A tissue whose function is to transport water and dissolved mineral salts in plants. So even uh, without looking at the table, we can still answer that. So that's a xylem tissue. So just make sure you study, you study hard. Then a cell found in the reproductive system. So the cell that has to do with reproduction from the given cells is a sperm cell. So each sperm cell carries 23 chromosomes and an ovum has 23. So after fertilization, the 23 from the sperm cell combines with the 23 from the ovum, hence gives us the 46 total of chromosomes. So remember that. Question B, in which tissue are the following cells found? In which tissue are the following cells found? Roman number one, red blood cells. So we'll just say blood. Remember, blood is a tissue, not an organ. Then uh, palisade, we'll say palisade, mesophyll tissue. That's the tissue for that. Then we we'll have question C. Name one organ found in a plant, leaf. A leaf is an organ in an animal. There are so many organs. For example, skin is an organ. The heart is an organ. Brain is an organ. So there are so many. We just say ETC. So that's it for this video. So just remember, number one, please remember to study hard for online tuitions. You can call on this number. And for questions, you can call this number. So that's it for this video. Thanks for watching.